Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. This is the third of four videos on IGC, inverse gas chromatography, what it is, what it does using apps. And in this one, we're going to discuss the measurement of diffusion coefficients using IGC. As always, I thank Ad Scientists who helped me greatly in the apps and these videos. All the apps are available on my Practical Chromatography website. A quick reminder of what IGC is, we have a column, we have it packed with, in this case, beads coated with the polymer that we're interested in analyzing the diffusion coefficient. And we inject various probes that go through the column and we measure the retention time. And from that retention time, we'll see that we can get directly to diffusion coefficients. Let's go to the app. One of the basic equations in the whole of chromatography is the van Diemte equation. And we can calculate the number of theoretical plate heights, h. And that depends on the flow rate of gas through the column, u, two constants, a and b, and a third constant, c, that actually depends on the diffusion coefficient of the probe in the polymer on the stationary phase. Clearly, we need to measure h, the theoretical plate height, and we have a column of length L and our particular probe molecule, let's say it's toluene, comes out after retention time T and has a peak width of D. And the theoretical plate height is L length times D over T squared divided by this constant. Finally, C is related to the thickness of the polymer coating H and the diffusion coefficient D via this equation where phi is a geometrical factor, which for spherical packing is 8 over pi squared, or around 0.8. And there's a partition coefficient k, which is found from this ratio. So how do we get to know what c is? Well, if, and this is a good assumption, b over u is very small, then the slope of h versus flow rate, u, will give you c directly. And that's what we find in the app. We have flow rates of 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. centimeters per second, and very conveniently we've got h's of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. They form a nice straight line, and we've got this factor 0.8, and we're saying that k is 10 from uh, measurements, and we've got 4 microns of polymer on each sphere, and the calculation therefore tells us that the diffusion coefficient is 5.3 times 10 to the minus 9 centimeters squared per second. If we'd done this with 2 microns, then the diffusion coefficient would have been 1.3, and if we'd had a thicker coating, the diffusion coefficient would have been smaller. Or if we'd measured k to be smaller, then etc. etc. So, by just measuring one probe, at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different flow rates, we've got the diffusion coefficient of toluene in that polymer. But of course, we have the packing, we have the polymer there, we can inject another probe. We can inject ethanol or MEK or octane, and we can find the diffusion coefficients of each of those within the polymer. Once you've got it set up, it's a very quick way to get a lot of diffusion coefficients. So why aren't we all using it? Well, there's a problem. In order to get this controlled coating of, say, four microns around each sphere which you pack into the column, that's relatively easy if you have a rather low viscosity polymer, but it's very hard for a big solid polymer. And as far as I know, people haven't cracked the problem of packing a column with small thicknesses of a higher molecular weight or a more rigid polymer. If someone listening to this video knows how to do that, then they can revolutionize the measurement of diffusion coefficients. And one of the reasons I want this particular video out there is that this is a very powerful technique and just needs this practical step to make it even more powerful. 